Afrique Média. Le monde, c'est nous. And thanks for joining us on this uh, very special edition uh, dedicated to talk about uh, the uh, recent uh, development in Brazil. We're talking about the outcome of the Sunday uh, runoff election uh, that saw uh, Lula uh, uh, da Silva becoming the 39th uh, president uh, of uh, the Latin American uh, uh, country. Uh, what do you have, what is the stakes uh, as uh, Lula prepares to take over uh, the button of Comana uh, come uh, January 2023? Uh, that is what we are going to discuss in this special edition train focus. We're going to look at uh, the uh, uh, the political democracy uh, in Brazil and of course to answer the question if elections are a it must test taking the case study of uh, Brazil and on this edition uh, I'm joined uh, uh, by a lady she's a political scientist who doubles as an international relations advisor no other person than uh, uh, Michaela Marquez uh, she's joining to give insight on the latest development in uh, Brazil hello to you Michaela it's a pleasure having you this day hello uh, thank you for having me it's I'm in Sao Paulo, Brazil, right now. Indeed, uh, we are most, uh, most uh, delighted to have you this day. And of course, uh, you haven't lived uh, the scenario or the development, everything. In uh, Brazil, it is important uh, for us to get first-hand information. And of course, that is why we're bringing to you this uh, a special edition, ladies and gentlemen, to understand the, the development surrounding the election runoff in uh, Brazil. But before we uh, uh, enter into the analysis, let Let's re revisit the, the, the election campaign atmosphere there in uh, Brazil as voters uh, were vying to cast their vote and, of course, with high expectations of a uh, victory. <laughs> Uh, we can see uh, a cheerful crowd uh, shouting and chanting Lula, Lula. It's a new moment, a new dawn for Brazilians. Of course, uh, the button of command is changing hands. Uh, coming back to you, Michaela, uh, let's first of all analyze holistically uh, the, the election atmosphere uh, there in uh, Brazil and of course how uh, support is reacted uh, uh, to the proclamation of the election results proclaiming uh, Luis Inácio Lula da Silva as the next president of the Latin American country. Yes. Well, first of all, uh, as Lula said, and as many, many people that are part of this coalition, because it's not just about the Workers' Party, the PT, but also about other parties, other personalities, uh, that joined the, the Lula campaign in order to defeat the neo-fascism that, that, that it was taking uh, the region and also the world. So it is a victory of democracy. As Lula said, um, democracy came out of victory last, uh, last night. So 
the atmosphere is like, first of all, it was a stop to Bolsonaro, uh, but also there are things coming like the Bolsonarism that is still in the Congress, that is still in the street. So it is a sensation of feeling of the struggle must go on, right? So I'll say that the, the people are celebrating in the street in, in the different region of the country. You know, the Brazil is a continental country. So it's big, big country uh, and has a, a huge extension uh, of territories. So there are many realities. There are many uh, cultural uh, roots that are, of course, linked to, to Africa in, in many aspects, like cultural, like racial, like um, social, um, uh, well, you know, the, there's a big link between Africa and, and, and Brazil. So the people else are celebrating, but at the same time, they know that, uh, that a lot of things are coming in the, in the, in the two months because, because Lula is going to take uh, power the 1st of January of 2023. So we still have two months where it's going to take place the transition between Bolsonaro and uh, Living and Lula coming into power. In Cape like you said, uh, there is a, a song of victory for the workers' uh, uh, party, but then uh, does that alone suffice? That is a, the question we are asking. And of course, uh, mentioning already Africa in your introductory statement, we come again to see what awaits uh, the uh, 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 president elect uh, Lula regarding his foreign policy. We know that uh, while he was president, uh, that is the year 2020. To, uh, right up to 2010, uh, we, we saw his uh, full engagement with the African continent. Uh, and today, uh, in the 21st century, we continue to ask this question of how his uh, uh, foreign policy is all about, especially in relation to the African continent. Yes, uh, Lula said last night, but he'd been saying the same thing during the campaign, during the last after he he uh, get out of, of uh, Curitiba jail, um, he started to campaign him. He started to talking again to the to the Brazilian people. And one of the main issues for for Lula in, in his agenda was to reconstruct the relate the bilateral relation, the international relations of Brazil with the whole world, because in his opinion. Uh, during the Bolsonaro era, during the Bolsonaro government, uh, all these historical relations were broken because Bolsonaro was, wasn't uh, paying attention on the international field, but with the uh, United States, especially with the government of Trump. So now he says that he wants to review the, the breaches with with uh, the Russian, with Latin and the Caribbean, but also with, and especially, and prim primarily with African continent. Um, so he says he's going to to uh, to have people uh, commanded to reconstruct these relations, to uh, to to start to to work in this transition uh, period, and also we we have to see like. There are going to be people going to uh, strategic um, African countries and also people from Africa, again, coming to discuss uh, big issues in, in the agenda, commercial, uh, cultural as well, but also um, development, uh, development issues and all kinds of, of, of uh, issues that uh, government uh, has Brazil, that is an important country in the region and in the world, uh, could uh, have with the with the with yeah with the international community, but especially with Africa. You know that uh, Lula said that Africa means a lot for for Brazil, and that the Brazil owes uh, a lot to Africa. And without Brazil, without Africa, it wouldn't be possible. To, to construct what Brazil is today. So, yeah, we're going to have a very active agenda in, in 2023. And 
Uh, so, so here a leader uh, uh, applauding the role of uh, the African continent uh, in the success story of uh, his own country. It's something very uh, commendable and uh, it, it should be noted, uh, uh, Mikala. It was actually a tight uh, uh, election there because when you look at the margin uh, between uh, Lula da Silva and uh, uh, Bolsonaro, uh, you notice that it was indeed a tighter uh, competition between the, the two uh, the two candidates so let's 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 uh, uh, take back to putting the democracy analyzing the democracy of brazil can we see that today uh, the the last year uh, black american uh, part of the uh, the country you know uh, is a litmus or a set as a test for democracy, can can we say that today Brazil is an example of political democracy in the global world? Well, it was a it was a, a hard battle. It was a hard battle because uh, Bolsonaro, with the uh, with the campaign of uh, misinformation, not just fake news, but also with misinformation and we uh, spread a lot of light uh, on the Brazilian society through the media, through, through, through the religions, um, through the government, through the margin of the government, of margin of the state. Uh, from this power place that he, he's still having because he's leaving office uh, in, in 31 of December this year, he spread a lot of light, he spread of misinformation, fake news. So it was easy to, to develop a campaign based on hate, based on, um, on uh, ra racism, based in homophobic issues, based in, in hate, basically. Uh, so uh, there are a lot of people that uh, feel that they could express way without respecting human rights, without respecting uh, other people, uh, be, be, without respecting minorities, without respecting women. So um, so it was a very tough battle. So the democracy was, was in threat. Uh, and I think that the, the result shows how hard was the, the, the battle uh, and how important is, is the victory. Uh, that Lula had, even for 2,000, uh, uh, 2 million votes of different, it, it means a lot. It means that the, the Brazilian society choose a democratic path. Um, and we must say that Bolsonaro did not, yes, uh, have a, a speech of defeat. He was defeated, and yesterday night he went to, to rest without saying a word about about without congratulating uh, Lula but also if he wouldn't congratulate Lula he could even say something to the Brazilian people those million of Brazilians that voting him uh, that believe in his proposal he just went to rest uh, without without giving a word to the world and especially to the Brazilian society so the the battle uh, the struggle continues continues because the democracy is all the time in in dangers. Uh, so with Lula, we have a hope, and the Brazilian people have a hope that uh, if someone is going to fight with them, their voices are going to be heard, and and, and they know it, it's going to be tough. They know it's going to be an administration that have to confront a lot of dangers a lot of uh, yeah, a lot of many meaningful uh, issues bring it back to the agenda, and and knowing that the Congress is uh, it's dominated by the right wing, so by by with uh, parties, so it's going to be very tough. But as far as we can say that it was a victory of the democracy. 
indeed uh, it's gonna, going to be a very tough uh, and uh, that is why uh, the uh, president elect uh, this is the right time for him to start work uh, uh, while waiting to actually uh, fully uh, officially take over in the year 2023 uh, 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 listening to you Michaela uh, as a political scientist it is uh, imperative for us to touch especially on global issues issues affecting the global Power, and then we are looking at how this can affect the, the leadership of uh, uh, President-elect Lula da Silva. What do you think uh, uh, his perspective regarding uh, the, the new world order that is uh, uh, being uh, created uh, that is causing, of course, uh, turbulence across the global world? And how can he avoid the, uh, this or uh, fit this in his uh, uh, agenda for the next years? You, uh, say, uh, could you please say it again? Because I have uh, like a problem with the connection. I couldn't hear the the, we're looking the question at, very yeah, well. Yeah, we are looking at uh, Lula da Silva taking office in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. And we understand uh, that it has been a turbulent moment, uh, both politically, economically, for the global moment. So we're looking at how it can actually avoid uh, this uh, uh, while uh, putting down his uh, agenda for the next years as president of uh, Brazil. We're talking about the, 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 the global challenges affecting the world in this uh, present uh, context. Yes. Uh, well, first of all, Lula said that he wanted to take uh, the, the issues. He is concerned about what is going on in the whole world, that Brazil is not disconnected from the whole world in the saying that what, what is uh, affecting the whole world, the the people in the world, especially the poor people in the world, uh, or in the developed uh, country, developing countries in the world, um, uh, are are also affecting to the Brazilian people. So he he is concerned about that the Brazilian people could have food enough food that. The, the, he wants to reduce the the um, the hunger the, the 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 hunger that you have in the country, um, and it's called uh, fome cero. He wants to 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 start to develop in a lot of programs in order to to um, uh, guarantee uh, food to the to the poor people, uh, security system, health uh, for everyone education, uh, and so on and so on. Uh, and these things are linked with the, with the global world. So he knows that, that we are in a, in a post-COVID uh, uh, era, and he knows that, that we are in the middle of another uh, capitalistic economic crisis. So in this, in this sense, um, he's, he's clear that he has to uh, uh, take a... Um, the Brazilian issues in uh, first place in agenda in order to then, or at the same time, uh, do the, the same things and have the same concerns on the international agenda. So he said that he's going to, to like relaunch the agenda that he already got and that everybody knows uh, about um, the, the national and international um, uh, sphere. Uh, that he has in the, in the first and the second uh, government, uh, but also he has to like renew uh, this agenda to to put it in the context of today of 2022-2023. Uh, so he's very committed to to have uh, better better uh, and, and new uh, bilateral relations uh, with the whole country with the whole world and also to to improve the social and economic situation of the whole country. Yeah. In, in, in data, it is important to improve the social and economic situation of uh, citizens. And we see that this aligns uh, very well uh, with uh, uh, Lula's uh, uh, policies, uh, putting the, the lower class first, uh, uh, giving priority to the vulnerable uh, people. Uh, while, uh, as the, the electoral body in Brazil had declared Lula the, 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 the winner, uh, Brazil actually uh, welcomed the congratulatory uh, messages and
uh, uh, this one caught my attention from uh, Bernie Sanders, uh, an American uh, politician, where he said, and I quote, the people of Brazil have voted for democracy, workers' rights, and environmental sanity. He said this while applauding uh, the outcome of the Brazilian uh, uh, Sunday runoff elections. So the question I'm asking is, what can we make of such statements relating to the personality of uh, Luis uh, Inácio Lula da Silva? Well, the, it is true. It is true. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the workers' right, uh, I mean, Lula is the leader of the workers' party. So the workers' right, it, it is like a main concern uh, of, of Lula and its uh, administration. So also he he's very um, concerned. He has a lot of expectation to have any good relations with the United States, but not only with the United States, but also with uh, with other countries uh, in Europe, and of course always in Asia and especially uh, with Africa. But but this is this is actually true. Uh, the the people of Brazil vote for democracy, uh, and and Lula knows this. Uh, and, and Lula make a, an, a, 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 a statement based on this, uh, a statement of, of uh, last night. Um, and also he has, a, he has a few minutes, a lot of minutes talking about what is going on in the, in the Amazonia, in the Amazon, uh, all the risk that uh, the Amazonia as a geographic uh, place how important it is for the um, environmental uh, environment of the whole world, but also how important it is for the people that live there. We have indigenous people, we have native people that live there. And every time that I speak with an indigenous leader or indigenous, indigenous people about the Amazonia, and I'm kind of expecting that they talk about the deforestation or the, or the illegal, um, uh, resource uh, searching and exploitation. They always mention me that that the, and it is absolutely true that the most important is the people, the human beings, that they have their um, um, ecological system. Uh, they have their own way uh, of living there, and it is uh, tra transcendental. I mean, it's, it is historical. And has many many centuries uh, living that way, uh, that they, they they are part of of the of the of the nature that is in risk. It's not just about tree or birds or any kind of other animals that you, or, or, or plants that you have in the Amazonia, but also uh, the human being that they are living there and they are suffering and they are being killed for illegal type of, of crimes uh, in order to to steal the, the resources that the Amazonia has and also the deforestation deforestation because the agribusiness needs a lot of territory so they are starting to use big 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 uh, amount of territory in order to produce um, yeah in order to distrust the strong uh, ecological system to have uh, uh, plantation of agrotoxicals or uh, other other type of of uh, food that uh, it is it is produced by uh, agrotoxicals as well. So the agro business is like taking place. Also, the illegal um, uh, resources that are being stealing from from this uh, Amazonia region. Uh, and especially the people, the people that live there, the, the, their lives are also in risk. So all this is absolutely true. I I know that, I mean, we can see that Lula is very concerned about these issues and that he wants to, to uh, pay attention and he will pay attention in this issue uh, as soon as he gets in power uh, in January 23.
Okay, uh, thank you for that, uh, Michaela. Uh, let's, uh, of course, uh, well, we are almost uh, culminating with uh, this uh, uh, session, but then uh, uh, let's look at uh, the uh, the Joe Biden administration. Uh, was actually uh, President Joe Biden actually sent a congratulatory uh, a message to Lula, uh, opening, uh, giving an opening invitation of a quest to work uh, to collaborate uh, with the, the Lula administration. And we know for sure uh, that Brazil is one of the pioneer uh, uh, members of the, the BRICS uh, nation. And we know the present uh, geopolitical con uh, uh, context, uh, the war between uh, Russia and Ukraine understands of uh, the United uh, States of America and, and uh, other countries in the West. What can we say about this uh, open invitation and of course the unfoldment uh, around uh, the uh, uh, international sphere as far as geopolitics is concerned? Yeah. Well, Lula said that he is going to meet with whoever he has to meet in order to, uh, to approach the, the main goals of its agenda, which is the agenda always has in the first place to the Brazilian people, especially the, the lowest class people, and also the the, the South South cooperation, the Latin American, the Caribbean uh, relation, um, yeah, countries and relations, societies, and uh, the African continent. So, as I, I have no doubt that he's going to accept this invitation and he is going to start having meetings, discussing and defending the, the rights uh, and also the, the objectives that Brazil has, that the region has and other people in the world have. I mean, Brazil has a, a position of leadership, not just in Latin America. As you said, it, it has an important role in BRICS, inside BRICS. So BRICS is waiting for Brazil to come back and have this uh, leadership, uh, like guiding uh, the BRICS again to be an important, important actor in the in the economic um, relations in the world. So everybody has a lot of expectation in 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 what Lula is going to do, and I'm pretty sure they're not going to be betrayed because Lula is committed. He has committed his life to the Brazilian people and to to have a type of leadership that we already know. What we don't know is what is going to happen because we don't read the future. But um, but we know that he is the same person that grew up in this little town in Pernambuco in the northeast northeast region in Brazil, which is one of the poorest region in the world. And he get to be president of one of the most important countries in the world without forgetting where he's coming from, uh, without forgetting his people, be, 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 without forgetting that he was a worker, uh, and without forgetting the human beings, basically, needs. So so we can be sure that there's, a, there's going to be a very, very active agenda uh, he he doesn't have time to lose. He's more than seventy five years old, uh, so he wanted to do everything. He wanted to do it faster. So we have to be ready to 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 see a lot of action coming the next year. Yeah. Uh, this one last uh, question, this last question before uh, we culminate, uh, uh, we are looking at uh, the economy of Brazil. We are looking at uh, the, the aspect of inflation uh, under uh, the uh, present uh, uh, leadership of uh, 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 Bolsonaro, uh, of course, uh, Bolsonaro, I beg your pardon, but then uh, what can the, the incoming uh, leadership do to actually revive uh, the economy? We are looking at the daunting tax that awaits uh, uh, President-elect uh, Lula da Silva as he takes over in uh, January uh, 2023. How can he ensure that he brings out the, uh, the economy from uh, uh, the downturn and, of course, uh, uh, bring a respite to the millions of Brazilians? Yeah, first of all, he wants to, to see uh, something that it was it was called the secret budget. 
the secret budget, it was a, a law that Bolsonaro approved in the Congress with the support of the Congress that allows the, the legislative uh, power branch to use money from the executive branch uh, without knowing where it's going to be used or what, what is going to be used that money. So where is going to go that money? Um, so first thing he wants to do is to review all this, all the, 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 the use of the phone of this secret budget. Uh, also, that, that would be, this is important for the redistribution of the, of the resources of the state and, and sending this, these resources to the places where they're more needed for the people. We don't, we don't, uh, we don't know where the, the money goes. We don't know because between the between the the, uh, the the Bolsonaro administration and some of the uh, party in the Congress, they are using this this money uh, for their own interests and, and benefits. Uh, so we don't know where where the money is going through. So first step would be to know where that coming went to, and to redirect the funds uh, to the real needs of the people. Uh, and it's going to be reviewed. Everybody's going to know where uh, the money went to. And during the Bolsonaro administration, but also he he wanted to 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 see the tax the tax uh, um, how the how the tax was going through the people that have less incoming. Uh, he wanted to switch this in order that the people that has a higher incoming could be. Uh, paying more tax, and with that, uh, with that, that funds also redirect to the to the main issues and the main interesting policies, social policies that that the Brazilian people uh, are demanding to. So this this would be one of the one of the two main things that he is going to do in in economic uh, uh, matters. Also, he said he he is uh, thinking. He knows that he's concerned that the 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 agro business, uh, the I mean the produ the production of uh, food, it's very important for Brazil. So he wa he wanted to to review uh, the the process of of uh, of the agro business uh, or the production of of food in the country, and uh, he knows. That also, he doesn't want to fight with anybody. Like he doesn't want to fight with uh, with the European Union. He wants to to everybody to sit in the table uh, on the table to discuss what is good for Brazil. Brazil as a, as a government, as a state, but uh, as we're talking about Brazilian people, uh, and and especially by Brazilian economy, and uh, and in this cause as equal without losing sovereignty, uh, being respected by the whole, the whole community, uh, international community. And through this uh, atmosphere, uh, be able to have better deals, economic deals with the international uh, uh, big, biggest production producer of any kind of means. Yeah. So we're talking about technology exchange. We're talking about uh, fertilizantes, fertilize, and and all these um, issues uh, are are involving uh, Russia, are involving China, are involving the United States, are involving the European Community. Yes, so this is the way he he wanted to do it, like, without fighting with anybody, uh, but being respected by everyone. So when we talk about one, we talk about uh, the countries that control the economy. That's that's European community, but also United States and, and so on. So he's clear that he, he has to do it this way. OK, 
Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Michaela. Thank you uh, for the great uh, insight uh, uh, regarding uh, the agenda of President-elect uh, uh, Lula and, of course, uh, uh, the atmosphere. Uh, we, we await uh, for a peaceful transition uh, there in uh, Brazil to see uh, to it uh, and to, of course, uh, see the leadership of uh, President Lula in this present context that is marked by uh, great international or global issues. Thank you so much uh, for the great insight. It was nice having you on this platform. Thank you for having me, and I hope we keep in touch. Indeed, indeed, uh, we look uh, forward uh, for other opportunities to continue to talk about uh, issues affecting uh, the global world at large, especially at this moment where international global, co uh, or global cooperation is uh, at stake. Uh, thank you so very much. And it is on this note, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, we put an end on, today's, uh, on this special edition dedicated to talk uh, about the outcome of the election runoff in Brazil, thank you, but I wish you a lovely moment in the company of our transmission. Afrique Media, le monde, c'est nous.